Welcome back to Bible study, to Paul's epistle to the Galatian church, his first epistle. Welcome back to John, welcome Derek, and I, I, I was going to crack a joke. But I thought it would completely confuse the viewers. And I was going to say, well, it's so good that we're able to start a new chapter. And can we read from chapter 3, verse 1? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many weeks. I thought, I thought it was a record, the number of weeks we spent in chapter 2. <laughs> but um, that says nothing compared to chapter 3 of Romans. And we are now um, getting, I think this will be the final. I don't never yes. say never, because Derek might correct me. But we are going to read from verse 26 of chapter 3. John's going to read it up to verse 4. Sorry, verse 7 of chapter 4. Yeah, that's right. The Gal Galatians, verse uh, chapter 3, starting at verse 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Thank you. Mm. Derek. Well, thank you for being with us now as we come for your word. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to be our teacher, to illuminate the word of God to us, to make it come alive and real to us, that we might live it uh, and enjoy it, Lord, in our life. Thank you for opening every heart and, Lord, revealing your truth to us and blessing each person who hears. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I've got, I've got ringing in my ear a, a chorus from the 1970s. So that everything I do becomes the thing that pleases you. Abba Father, I would be a son indeed. And I think it fits. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's not the law, but it's so that everything I do becomes the thing that pleases you. Abba Father, I would be a son indeed. And that's what a son should want to do. Yes. A child of God should want to do is to yes. please him. Yes. It's not... Yes because you mm. must do it, because I've given you, yes. you know, whatever, a, a, a disciplinarian upbringing, and you must do it because this is the law, uh, you know, and you, and, you, and you get disciplined and punished and smacked um, on the way. It's as when you become a son, you want to please your father. This word son really means a grown-up son. Yeah. Who is like his father. Yeah. And I think in the, in the Hebrew it's to be a son of, is, is to have that na the nature of. Yeah. And so growing up, of course, we need that external yeah. controls. Yeah. But there comes a point where we grow up, where we, where we have the reality in us. Yeah. And now we don't need the external controls anymore. And that's, that's called sonship. It's the word weos, just before, which is yes, grown up son. That was the, what we had at the end of last week. And I've just remembered uh, that at the end of last week, John wanted and you said oh we don't have time to uh, go into it and it was in the last minutes 
Yes. So I then jumped in with the huios, uh, you know, to finish off the Bible study. But just, just to give you that chance. Well, I don't, I, in, in the intervening period, I've answered the question I was going to ask, and it actually would be disruptive for me to say it now. So oh, really? thank you for the okay. opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, okay. but I don't need to say it. Oh, well, that's, that settles that. Okay. Because I didn't want to feel that I'd, no, bless I'd just you. sort of, bless you, I appreciate you know, it. Carried, carried on with Derek, <laughs> and, you, you know, and everyone would be thinking. Well, you know, I, 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 it I was will, like a trailer. I, know, I, will, I will mention it, hmm. but, but, but it's no longer the question that, that, that you need to answer, but okay. because others at home might we'll have been go through the, the same question. And that's that we're going into great detail how the law disciplines and constrains and prepares uh, for the coming faith in Christ. Um, but that's all very well if you've been brought up under the law, if you've been brought up under the sacrificial law, if you've, you know, you've had to take your, go your, your sheep or your goat to the to the temple and, and lay hands on it and have your sins transferred. If you haven't been brought up in that culture, as the, the Gentile Galatian, uh, the, the members of the church who were Gentile, um, then they've not been trained or constrained in that same way. Mm. Um, and, and really, we're talking about behavioral issues, you know, the behavior that comes from being under the law. But I, uh, that was the question I had. It was yeah. all very well addressing what the law does, but only the Jewish members of the Galatian church had experienced that. Yeah. The Gentile members had, had not, so how do we deal with that? But then, of course, I realized that Galatians goes on in chapters five and six, in particular, talking about behavior. So Paul covers it. Paul, obviously, of course, is well aware of that problem and goes on to deal with it yeah. once he's dealt with the religious Jewish aspect. Yeah. Thank you so much. And the religious Jewish aspect, because, of course, they were trying to bring the Gentile members under that yeah. same mm same thing so th they would have got some benefit from what uh, from this letter as well thank you you got me off the hook you see john because i'll have f f letters coming in oh Tim, yes you're not allowing john yeah, you would you, know, you would say you what would. he wanted to say at the end yeah. of the previous yeah. <laughs> week yes i want to make the point that's a good point yeah. I, I i i want to make the point that 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 actually doesn't happen that that although you can't see it on camera yeah. we communicate with each other that's here right. in this studio um if i've got something i definitely say i will say it. but uh, you know d d it's all very well saying that we all eat to have equal time but hey this is the lord's show that's right and exactly. and and derek has particular gifts which i get blessed by i'm quite happy to hear him oh, same, here. Here. same here and if i've got something to say i'll that's right. I'll catch your eye. Exactly. It's yeah, not exactly. a case of, we don't have to have a third of the time each. Oh, you're really so don't. grown up, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, while we're on the subject of being grown up, well, let's talk about the togas. You know, when the sun, they come into sunship, the, the hui, hui, huigas. So. Yes, and it, it talks about adoption later on. Yeah. But yes, there would come a time when the father would acknowledge that, that my son now is grown up. He, he doesn't need to have this, he's been talking about this tutor, this paedagogos, this, this disciplinarian mm. governing his life, which is the role that the law takes. Mm. And we, we all know that from childhood. Our life was constrained as children. And so we've had the, the equivalent experience. And then when we've uh, reached a point that, you know, in a sense, that we are considered grown up, we now have freedom. Yeah. We are not under those constraints. Yeah. And, and the hope is, really, that, that we've now got the, the character within us yeah. to, to, to live as we ought to live. Yeah. So in the ancient times, the father would, would acknowledge that, that my son is now of age. And, and it might be a different age for different sons. And then he would show that by giving him the toga virilis, mm -hmm. the, the, the cloth of a man. And so as he would go around, everyone would say, yes, he is now to be treated as a man. Mm. And, and, the, and the med in it, from before, Paul has been saying, you know, now that, now that faith in Christ has come, we're no longer under a tutor. We're not mm. under the law in that, in, as, a, as a way of ex externally controlling our life because we should be fulfilling that requirement. It's very, very interesting within. that it was um, different ages for for different sons. So the, the important thing isn't that you've followed a system, which means, which is very much the education system that we have. You go in a cohort according to your age, um, rather than according to your progress. Um, and so you can actually reach sonship, as it were, um, 
depending on your maturity mm. rather than you're a son. I am a son because I'm, you know, right. 17. I, you know, now I take my driving tests. And, it, you know, our society is very much segmented in terms of... Um, yes. A, a it's a sort of legal framework of, yes. of age, you know. It, it's interesting you say yeah. that. Um, probably... The, the women were now grown, but there may be some men who, who like me, follow rugby. Yeah. And one of the reasons that New, the, the New Zealand All Blacks are so good, and after all, they're only a country the size of Scotland, five, mm. six million of them, and yet they are world beaters, is the way they train their young. And they don't train them as we do. You're in that class and you go and have your rugby lesson. Mm. They group them by weight and size rather than by age. Mm. And, and that way you don't get the big ones flattening the little ones. They all, and, and it's one of the reasons. Mm. There's also a spiritual reason yeah. with a hacker and everything that yeah. they dominate, which yeah. is not so attractive. No. But, but the way they develop their, their boys leads, and no other nation does that as far as I know. And I, uh, just on the education side, I, I think it is far better to, uh, and this is the struggle they have with cohorts in schools because they have to differentiate and they, uh, because they want to have everyone equal. You've all got to be in the class because you're all of that age. But actually, um, to have kids uh, in um, uh, groups according to ability, yeah. um, you know, uh, uh, it's better. You don't yeah, have this better. sort of self-consciousness that I'm not quite performing enough. Yeah. You have your own targets, your own goal setting, mm. and you... Um, uh, you give the kid to to work according to his own pace. I mean, in in this country, you know, we have the grammar school system at eleven. I mean, it's not much left of it. But in Kent, where I come from, it, you, eleven, you know, you are basically mm. selected out at that one snapshot in time. But you, uh, all kids, learn, grow up in different ways at different speeds, and mature at different ages. You know grow fat or thin or tall or, you know, short at yeah. different times. And um, it, there's something a little bit mechanical about saying, right, this is the, the factory of education and we're just going to churn out and stamp out sausages or whatever and then push them out into society. It's not God's made each child an individual, mm. you know, made in his image, and you've got to give that individual, um, as it were, according to God's plan for their life, yes. rather than the state's, you know, communist has, plan for ev everyone. Everybody has some talent or attribute which, yeah. is, which is worth developing. Yeah, absolutely right. And, it, you know, just to force them through one yeah. um, stereotype, as it were. Um, anyway, so the we all get to the point of becoming a son so go, or yes. daughter of God. In the analogy, it's... it's in Christ, for you through faith, um, when we put our trust in Christ, from the spiritual point of view, that's when God regards us as a son, mm. as a weos. Yes. And the toga virilis really is in verse 27. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That's right. So clothed we, yourselves we are, with Christ. That's one way of seeing it, that we are clothed with Christ we, we, uh, God sees us as his son now. Mm. In other words, that we don't need this external law to control our behavior and the threat of punishments and, and so on. We are now accepted and treated as sons and we are expected mm. to live out the righteousness of God yeah. by, because we are sons of the Father. Yeah. And the key is that we are in Christ Jesus. That's right. Through faith, we have been put into Christ. Yeah. And remember, he's been, this connects us now with what he's saying before, that the blessing of Abraham was received by Christ. Yeah. So once we, through faith, we are now put into Christ. Yeah. And now everything is in Christ. The whole blessing, the whole inheritance, salvation, yeah. sonship, everything is in Christ. Yeah. So it's all by grace. Yeah. And the moment we accept Christ, we are baptized into Christ. Yeah. And in Christ, we are now sons of God. Yeah. It's like suddenly it's, it's done for us. Yeah. What we were striving for now is, is done for us. And we are sons of God, all of us, in Christ Jesus. Yeah.
just going to say, John, if you just on that point, if you could read the 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 um, literally on the cusp of uh, the final two verses, where um, of of our chapter three of Galatians, final two verses, um, because that, as it were, concretizes what you've just said that we're in Christ. Yes. So, so there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither slave nor free, there's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Isn't that it's, it's, wonderful? It sort of completes it's absolutely what wonderful. he opened up with in terms of Abraham. That exactly. we, And it's all about Christ in every yeah. verse. It's, yeah. it's about being in Christ. Yeah. And I think it's worth talking about the baptism into Christ. Yes. Because there are yeah. three baptisms and they're not all yeah. the same. Okay. Because I, th I thought there'd be at least three, so that, you know, <laughs> there are three <laughs> three types of law. So there's there baptism has to be three into Christ, there's, and the a the agent of the baptism is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit baptizes us into Christ. That's the medium. Mm. We're baptized into union with Christ, mm. um, and that means total identification. Then there is the baptism into water, mm. and that's an elder of the church baptizes you into water, mm. which is really a picture of the baptism in Ceremonial. Christ. Ceremonial. Yes. And then there's the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which I believe is another baptism again. Mm. And it's Christ who baptizes us into the Holy Spirit so that we're immersed in the Holy Spirit. Mm. But the primary one, and, and in Ephesians... that's what baptism, you know, the word baptism means being immersed. Immersion. Yeah. Immersed, not an yeah. immersion here. Yeah, which pr brings me to, to Romans six. Okay, go because for it. there's another one, which is baptism into death. I think yes, yeah. that's part of the baptism into Christ. Oh, well, yes, it is. Say. But I mean, in Romans six, he, he mentioned in particular Ro Romans six, uh, verse four, mm. uh, through I think to well through to when I stop. Therefore, <laughs> we were buried with him through baptism into death. Yes, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life. Mm. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Mm. And it's a really exciting scripture, that one. And, and, and the, where he says in verse five, for we have been united together, in the likeness of his death, that we are in union with Christ. And I understand that the Greek word that is used there, and I can't call it to mind, but it doesn't matter, is the only time in the entire New Testament that that Greek word is used. And you, there is not a stronger word uh, for, for union. Um, it, it, it is so strong that if you were conjoined twins, it would be impossible for a surgeon to separate you. Mm. That's how strong that union and how close it is. It is inseparable. Wow. That's really what I'm getting yeah. to. Mm, yeah. Absolutely inseparable. Yeah. So you can't lose your salvation. Yeah. Nothing right. can separate you from the love of God once you're in there. Yeah, in Christ Jesus. Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons. Yeah. Baptism is identification. Uh, yes. It? And it's through immersion you're identified, you yeah. become one with. That's right. That. So it was used of dyeing garments, where you would take a garment and bapt, bapto, baptize it in, say, red dye. Yeah, yeah. And it would u unite with the red dye, and then it co comes out changed. Yeah. And so, and in verse 3, that you started that in 4, but in verse 3 death. it says, do you know, not know that as many of us that were baptized into Christ Jesus yes, were baptized into his head? Yeah. So that, this yes. is the baptism of Christ, yes. which tells us more. When we're baptized into Christ, in Christ now we become identified with his death, burial and resurrection. Yes. We become united with him yes. and he comes into us. We are changed. Amen. Amen. And in a sense, it's the image of God being put back, isn't it? Yes. That being restored. Yeah. From, from what was removed at the fall. And baptised into his death is, as you say, the written regulations were, yes. as it were, went down. Went down. And uh, it's all by grave. Nailed, on the nailed, cross, nailed to the cross, went down buried, into the grave. And buried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The classic verse on the baptism in Christ as well is, yeah. um, which happens at the moment of salvation. Yeah. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12 yeah. and 13, yeah. and it talks, adds another d dimension to it as well. 
Um, for as the body is one and has many members, but all are members of that one body, so we being many are one body, so also is Christ. Christ yeah. is the head and the body. Yeah. For by one spirit, we were all baptized, baptized. into one body. Yeah. So it's the Holy Spirit that does this. Mm. He baptizes us, us into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves so or same. free. By the way, the parallel is there again, you see, as exactly. we have in our verse. Neither yeah. it's talking nor Greek. It's yeah. about the same thing, you see. Yeah. Baptism yeah. into Christ, which is all by grace. We didn't yes. work for it. We simply accepted Christ and then we were baptized into Christ. Yeah. And our whole inheritance, including sonship, is in Christ, mm. now comes true for us. Mm by grace, and we've all been made to drink into one spirit. One so spirit. At the same time, yeah, yeah. we receive the Holy Spirit within us. That's mm. all part. Mm. We, uh, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside us and we're born again, and it all happens in a split second. The yeah. moment we accept Christ, we are baptized into Christ. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And it's, uh, that's the main baptism. But the interesting thing about the body is he goes on to say that we're made up of many parts. So we're, we're not we are in Christ, uh, so as one in Christ, as one in the Spirit, but there are many parts of the body. It's, mm. it's, it's, Paul doesn't let anything slip, any no, confusion. No, there are no loose ends, ends, are there? Yeah. So it's, uh, it's very good. It's and and very good. we're united to Christ, yeah. and we have put on Christ, yeah. and now God treats us as sons. Mm. He expects us now, to because to, we have his Spirit within us, mm to actually live by the Spirit mm -hmm. and, and not by some, ex like we'll, we don't do what we do because somebody is going to punish us if we don't do it. That's it, true. We're, it flows out of our heart. It's interesting that chapter in Romans starts, Romans 6, about um, should we go on sinning? Mm -hmm. Yes. So he's using the arg he's u Yes. You explain it, John, because it's, it comes in um, what you read about being baptised into his, Let me just his back death back. was an argument against going on sinning. In, in one sense, it's creating the new order, as it were, which is what I started with my yeah. song at the beginning. That How it's can not you even think that way? Because, because you're cha you've you want, been changed. That's not pleasing to the Father. Yeah. Uh, that's, um, you know, we... Um, it, some, you see, would say, well, we're because the previous chapter is all about grace, you see. Yeah. Um, but, and and, and that then it, he, Paul just steps back and says, well, you know, don't think that you can just go on sinning there. Well, it, well, it's well, all it, like we're all under grace. Yeah, yes, yes and no. I mean, this was the, the verses that the Lord used to open my eyes to grace. I mean, I, no way I would have intellectualized this. Yeah. It was just boom, and it was there. It, it, it's in a sense, although it's a warning, it's a rhetorical question. Mm. It, it, it's impossible because if you understand, forget the flesh, uh, forget the flesh, it's got nothing to do with the flesh, it's got to do with the new man in Christ. The flesh will get up to all sorts of things that the new man doesn't approve of, but the Lord sees the new man. You are clothed in a robe of righteousness. You are endowed with the Holy Spirit. You are you know, the Lord looks at you and sees his son. He looks at you and see, see, he sees Tim. Mm. You're not, you're not a, a, a clone, mm. but he sees the Christ's righteousness in you because you are clothed in his yeah. imputed righteousness. Yeah. So the new man never sins. Whatever the flesh gets up to, mm. yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. This is grace. So that's rhetorical. Just explain that again, the first verse. So well, read it out so that people know what you're talking about. Yeah. What shall we say then? You know, is there a problem here? Because I've been, could there be a problem? I've been talking about grace here. Could there be a problem? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Certainly not. Because it's impossible. Mm. And I received that by the Holy Spirit when I, you know, it's impossible. So it, it's, it, the question doesn't arise. I mean, if you're born again, Yes, you will sin, we know that, and 1 John 1, 5 gives us the out. 1, 1 John 1, 9 gives us the out on that. Not an excuse, but it gives us the remedy. Mm. But um, you will no longer have the desire to sin, you know, voraciously, if you like, because you have new appetites, you have new desires, you have, you're changed, you're a new creature. A new yes, sure, Christ some Jesus. of the old man's still clinging on for dear life. Yeah. 
and, and over the period of sanctification in this life, we'll gradually deal with that to a greater or lesser extent. But the new man cannot sin. Yeah. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. As we'll read in, 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 in chapter 4, you know, this new man, this man who has God in his spirit and the, and the Holy Spirit in his spirit who's crying out, Abba, Father, how can that person possibly sin? Yeah. We need to separate the old man from the new man, but recognize that the old man is still about and he will mislead us and lead us astray. The new man cannot sin because he's clothed in the righteousness of Christ. So how can he? It's a complete contradiction. Well done. Thank you. I'm pleased that we we brought (laughs) into that. And you didn't even jump in. I had, I I had to not only catch your eye, I had to drag it out. So, um, so we're still in chapter three, but we're nearly. We're almost, we've nearly, almost there. Almost there. Yeah, and it, there's one interesting thing here. It says, you know, neither Jew, Greek, slave, free, male, yep. female. Mm. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And the word for one here is literally one person. It, it, it seems a strange thing, mm. but he is, he is saying we are one entity yeah. in Christ Jesus. And of course, in verse 16, he had said that, um, that the seed, um, Abraham and his seed were the promise made. He doesn't say as seeds, but he says of one seed. seed. So there is one seed yeah. called Christ. Yeah. And when we were baptized into Christ, we became part of the body of Christ. Yeah. We became part of Christ, if you understand me correctly. We've become part of the body of Christ, but it's just one seed, yeah. Christ and his body. Mm. And it's to Abraham and his seed, Christ, yeah. which includes us, we have that the promises are made. Yeah. So we automatically, yeah. the moment we're put in Christ, we automatically inherit the whole blessing of Abraham. It's all ours. Mm. Because we're in Christ, not because of our works, because we are in Christ, we inherit it by grace through through faith. Mm. And and we are all equal in that. Whether you're male, female, whatever your social status is, whatever your racial profile is, (laughs) it makes no difference as far as God's concerned. Of course, from a human point of view, there are these differences. Mm. They're real. Mm. But uh, as far as God's concerned, we're all equal in Christ. Mm. These differences don't matter. They don't matter to God. He treats us all equally. We are all equally part of the body of Christ. So for me, there's two aspects to God treating us equally. uh, He says God doesn't show favoritism. All those who sin under the law will be judged by the law. All those who sin apart from the law will perish apart from the law. So there, there is this incredible, I mean, it wasn't invented in the modern progressive world, was it, equality? It's just so clear in the scripture. There's an equality in terms of judgment and there's a, an equality in terms of salvation. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. impartial. Yeah. We're all equally important to God. We all have equal access to God. We all have the, the same inheritance of salvation. Yeah. How wonderful Praise is that? God. Yeah, it's absolutely wonderful. And when, when it says... Um, Jew and Greek, sometimes it says Jew and Gentile. I assume that it it's basically means the same thing. It's yes. just that he's sort of writing, I suppose he's writing the whole of Galatians in Greek, so he's probably got that in his head. Yeah. That, yeah, know, he says the Greeks Greek are the Gentiles. a representative of the Gentiles. The Gentile, yeah. In the Greek world, they were the Gentiles, as it were. I mean, I mean we weren't talking about Africans and Indians. And it's Chinese. a figure of speech in a way, where yeah, you so. use a particular... That's right race to represent the Gentiles. That's good. Yeah. yeah. That's and, good. and those are the three main divisions in society, isn't it? It's the racial division, the sexual division, and, and the status division. Yes. And he is saying, well, whatever I'll divide ma- men up, you know, mm. as far as being in Christ, mm. those things are not important. Of course, we're still it's male. It's really important, by the way. Yes, we're still, still male, male, and, male female, and female, you know. but it's so important because most of, of what's written in the scriptures is in the male you know, gender. We've just been talk, talking about sons, we've been talking about the man, new man in Christ. So it's important that Paul drops in there, there's neither male nor <laughs> By the way, yeah. you know, there's neither male nor female. It's really, uh, it's countercultural. Yeah. You know, very male dominated societies um, and it's there. Oh, yeah. it's, it's very important. The scriptures are impartial yes, in Paul. terms of 
it was a certain male or female. You know, female equality there in, in that sense. It's fantastic. Yes. Spiritual it, sense. Yeah, it, we don't need to take lectures from those, <laughs> you know, in the secular world. No. Um, it's quite clear in our scriptures. Yes, and, and it, it's not saying, um, and I'm not suggesting it's as we understand male and female now, but it, it's not saying that in heaven there won't be people who you recognize as being male, because I don't have no word, and female. It's not saying that. It's just saying you are totally equal. That's right. That's and there's right. No, di no, no artificial division between no higher you. value exactly. to one or exactly so. the other. There are different roles. Yeah. And it was very different radical. Different physiologies, yeah. there I am allowed to say. Yes. <laughs> very radical, because if you had a, like a, a, a Christian assembly, normally people would be you know, seated by status or whatever. Yeah. And I think in the first century, this was radical, that mm -hmm. the rich people would mix with the poor people yeah. and there wouldn't be any of this snobbery. And James actually tells, tells them off for having class distinctions. Yeah. But the, you know, the vision is no racial distinctions, no male, female, you know, all of this. Mm -hmm. You know, in the synagogues, the, the women would be separated from the men and possibly be put in the balcony or whatever. And, and, and Paul... And the rich would are. be on the eastern wall, or is it the western wall? Exactly. And that's... Hitler on the roof. Contradicts the gospel. Yeah. So the gospel, this is radical. This mm -hmm. equality mm -hmm. of, through the gospel is, is radical. Yeah, yeah. In God's eyes, the rich, the poor, they're all equal if they're in Christ. Mm. I believe very strongly in that. Which makes sense if you're part of his body. If you, you know, yeah. you, of course there's going to be no division. As, as what makes sense is that there's no sin. Yeah. How can you go on sinning? I mean, the, yes. the whole, the whole e yeah. edifice collapses. Yes, it does. The whole yeah. seed disintegrates yes. if, if, there's, uh, if you go on sinning. Yeah. If the body of Christ is sinning. Yes. Yeah. Shocking. Because it does, uh, you know, there, there are examples through history and today of, of those who are, as, as it were, apostates. Yeah, but they're probably... Imposters. Yes. Um, who are going on sinning. But they're probably never saved. I, I have to say that with, with, with pretty strong conviction. Mm. Because of what I said earlier, the, the, you, you know, you, you, you are changed. If you're not a new creation, then you're going to carry on thinking the same old ways, doing the same old things. Mm. You know, so many of us say, uh, when I was saved, I stopped swearing overnight. I mean, that's a very common confession. Yeah. It certainly yeah. was my, in my case, yeah. overnight. Just it was no longer, I didn't think about it. I just didn't do it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure lots of others had that. You become a new creation. If and you're carrying what, on the doing Lord the Jesus same, says, what you know, comes out of you? You might be in bondage you. to certain things, you know, the, from the past, which are still carrying on, but they make you utterly miserable, which is a very different thing from willfully sinning because you think you can get away with it. But, you know, you're not safe. Yeah. Somebody like that's not safe. Galatians 5.21 says, yes. those who practice, and he's listed as yeah, the, the great works list of the flesh, there, yeah. um, and I said, I warned you beforehand, those who practice such things, doesn't mean you don't occasionally no. mess up, you know, yeah. but if you practice it as a lifestyle, yes. you've embraced it as your yeah. lifestyle, uh, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of Absolutely. God. Now I thought, well, that means you won't rule and reign with Christ. But when I think about it, yeah. it's, he's very clear that those who inherit are the sons, sons inherit. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's saying these people are not saved. I think so too. You know, they will not you. inherit the kingdom. No, they're not saved. They're, they're not sons. Yeah. Okay. You know, and that they show it by how yeah, they live. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of them in Christendom. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Um, chapter four. We try not verse to skip 29. it. <laughs> verse twenty-nine. Okay, we won't skip verse twenty-nine. It's important. Um, Very important. Because I could have said, ah, so we've just reached five twenty-one. Let's read five, chapter five, verse twenty-two. <laughs> Over to you, Derek. Well, yeah. if we me, just wrap up, in order. finish off his argument. You're my you. tutor. You're leading me up until chapter four. There you go. And then you'll. And be then free. and then I won't need you anymore yeah, as we'll my tutor because well, you were my tutor for chapter three. We'll set you, <laughs> set you free. That's right. And if you are Christ, so that's another way of saying. You are Christ, because we're in the body, we're under the headship of Christ. Yeah. So I, I do say that to receive Christ, you have to, in some sense, receive him as your Lord. Yes. You're under his headship, and now you are Christ's. So you actually belong to Christ. Mm. He purchased you with his blood. He does say that, yeah. And, right. and so you are Christ. And we're slaves to Christ, you mm. see. 
Yeah. We're no longer slaves to sin, but we're slaves to Christ. So we come out of that sort of confinement within sin. We come into a new confinement. We belong to Christ. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And um, by choice. Yes. Yeah. By choice. Yeah. Praise God, and it's a good choice. Um, if because then you are Abraham's seed. So he's wrapping this up now. Yeah. He's saying, if you are Christ, if you are in Christ. You are in the seed. You are the seed in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so you are Abraham's seed. So that's how you inherit the blessing of Abraham. Thank you. Not by physical descent, but because you are now in Christ, in the seed, mm. and in the seed of Abraham. And so you inherit everything that was promised to Abraham, that blessing. Yeah. You inherit it by faith. <laughs> Praise God. You are it's pity the camera sometimes isn't just showing John <laughs> the point that Derek says with his wonderful truths and John is just there <laughs> absolutely glorying in the truth. It's nice. It it's nice. For, it's nice for me. I, the viewers don't always see what I see, which is a wonderful image of John enjoying the truth. Yeah, it is. It's wonderful. And, and so, yeah, that, that, he concludes that now by yeah. saying you are Abraham's seed and because you're Abraham's seed, you are heirs. Yeah. You inherit the promise. Mm the heirs according to the promise. So that blessing Amen. that was promised that actually includes justification, salvation, mm -hmm. the new birth, sonship, you know, you name it. Yeah. Um, the promise is inherited yeah. because we are now in Christ. Yeah. What I absolutely love. All by grace. Love. Amen. All by grace. Yeah. Praise God, as you would say. Um, what I absolutely love, I love verse 1 of chapter 4, not just that we finally arrived there, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, from um, reading it many times. What I'm saying is, as long as, uh, that is that as long as the heir is a child, he is no different from a slave, although he owns the whole estate. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's, it's no different. We are slaves. It's, it's an interesting juxtaposition that we're heirs. But we're also slaves. Potential heirs. But the difference way. between an heir and a slave is that we own the whole estate <laughs> as an heir. Which means you'll probably be worsely, or you'll be badly beaten by the, yeah. by the tutor because he's very jealous of you. <laughs> <laughs> because he's, he's a slave himself. I know that I've read it from the NIV. Yeah. I know there's probably a better um, rendition of it. But um, it's, it's, a, I mean, it's an amazing thing to be It's a heir. bit like, no, it reminds me, and it's, you'll relate to this, because my father was in the army, and also my cousin was in the army. So I actually, he went to Sandhurst, yeah. and as, as did my cousin. And uh, I went to the Sandhurst passing out ceremony. And it was so interesting, because for those year or two years, I can't remember now, they were under the sergeant major. Yes. You know, these young men, they were under the con strict control of the sergeant major, who obviously gave, probably gave them a hard time. And you could see that. But when they passed out, immediately now, the sergeant major is, yeah. is um, you know, saluting them. And now they are over that. That's right. And it's, it's like the law. Again, they were yeah. under the law, but now... They've grown up. They've come to sonship, if you like. Yeah. They are no longer under under that law, and it's a total, immediate change of rules. No, yeah. no gentle transition. Yeah. Suddenly now they are not under the law of the sergeant major. Yeah. In fact, the sergeant major is, yeah. you know, deferring to them. Yeah, it, that just came to Amen. me there. But Out, so outwardly deferring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John, you know all about this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Naughty boy. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, I, on, I, are we in verse one now? I, I had a comment about the estate because we, you know, we had yeah. quite a big estate in in Sussex uh. with a, with a nice big house and whatever, 150 odd acres. And there's a classic line because my dad um, saw that everything um, that he had was for the Lord. And he eventually gave this wonderful property uh, to be used a, a, into a Christian trust and gave it away um, for mm. Christian use. But um, in, the, in the gardens is, is the gardener and someone comes up and says, what a magnificent, what a magnificent building, you know, who owns it? And the gardener says, the Lord. <laughs> Lord who? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, anyway, that's my little anecdote for the day. Um, are we in verse 1 of chapter 4? Yes, and I, he I, is, I, but asking. we need to understand that the chapter break is probably good. Yes. Paul, but in it does a sense, just now continue. He's, he's, it continues. Yeah, he's reached no a question. climax at the end of chapter 3. Yeah. But now he's kind of going back yeah. 
and saying it again in a different yeah. way, yeah. but in order to make an appeal to to these um, Galatians, yeah. you know, what, what do you think you're doing? You know, but he is in a way backtracking and and making some of the same points again in a different way. Yeah. I I think when it says the heir, we have to kind of from the context say it's the potential heir, yeah. the potential heir. Yeah. If if that boy becomes a son, you know, that is true. Know, he That's could true. become wayward. I mean, yeah. he could right. go off the rails, yeah. and the father will never say, "I yeah. I acknowledge him as my son." That's right. And and he represents me now. Yeah. That may not happen. So this is a potential heir, and in a sense, the whole human race is a potential heir. You know that God wants to bless. Theoretically, you know, He wants to bless, without getting into issues of election, but. You know, God wants all the, ge the Gentiles to come into the blessing of mm. Abraham. Mm. Mm. But they, do, they won't necessarily... Inherit. They won't necessarily inherit. Mm. But, so it's really a potential heir. Yes, of course, of course. As long as he's a child, because this is... As in indeed I was. <laughs> it's the, it's the, so, the Sound of Music song, you know. Somewhere in my youth or childhood... I must have done something bad. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Sorry, I, I, um, apologies to whoever it was, Rogers and Hammerstein on that one. <laughs> yeah. Sound of music. Right? Yeah. Sound of music. The, um, he's, he's talking about, again, we're, we're back, you know, in the state, but while mankind, in a sense, was under the law, yeah. was being prepared for Christ, mm. Um, he says, as long as he's a child, as though he doesn't differ from a slave, although he's master of all, he's potentially, mm. God is pre pre preparing him to, be, to come into the fullness. Yeah. But yeah, he's like a slave, he's under rules and regulations, he's yeah. under external constraints, he's under law, yeah. like, a, like a child is. Yeah. He's building an analogy, mm. uh, and, and the child, although he's going to come into this awesome inheritance, mm. um, he is actually treated like a slave. He's he's constrained, yeah. And and the law was was constrained. And is this us. all leading up to uh, again the Lord Jesus? Mm, so exactly. he was, he 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 was the heir, but the heir meant that he was the owner as well, if you know what I mean. But in our case, you're right. We're potential heirs, mm. and we might blow it. But but if if these verses are all leading up to God sent His Son, it, it could. This could all be in the context of, of him, but then we enter into him. Yeah, he, I think he's talking about the human race generally, yeah, okay. that there's a progressive revelation of God to the human race. Okay. And before Christ came, hmm. we were in a kind of childhood phase, and God was preparing us for the coming of the Messiah, which he calls the fullness of time. Yeah. Um, but he's kind of preparing the human race, and particularly Israel, hmm. but in a sense, the whole human race. Because I was just thinking, if those first two verses could relate to the Lord when he had been made in human form, and you know, he was growing up as a child, and he was subject to guardians, you know, until the time set by his father. Because the Lord spoke about the time. You know, it's not the time. In a, in a vague way. Father, so in a vague way, good. Well, that's, where, <laughs> that's, that's why we have Bible study, to clarify yeah. my vagueness. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's good. No, you're but right. He was, um, I don't think so. No. Actually, because no. he was a weos. Of course he was. You know, and he, he operated uh, I mean, as, as soon as, you know, 12 son. years old, he was in the temple, wasn't he? So I think it's um, talking about... Yeah. Debating yeah. with... Yeah. 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 We're talking about unsaved humanity as a whole, yeah. I would Got say. It. Got it. Yeah, but he was still under law. He put himself yes. under law. Yes. Yeah, and uh, of course, as he grew up, and he he had to learn to. I, I know all sorts of stories about him coming out, mm -hmm. saying Hallelujah, but I, I, yeah. perhaps they did. I. But he was a baby, and he grew up, and and would have been taught. Of course, he's being taught by God as well, His wasn't father. he? As well as by being taught by. My rabbis. It was an amazing intellect, you know? yeah. mm. incredible intellect. Stunning. He was internally motivated, although yeah. he was under the law and he had to fulfill yeah, he, the law. He, that's right. It, he wasn't like, he wasn't. his actions weren't governed by, like, no. he, 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 he was the son of God. Yes. And, and he had that 
inside him. He yes. had the nature yes. and the likeness of the Father. Yeah. You so I don't think it's yeah. really talking Good. about Jesus here. Yeah. Um, Good. He's under guardian. By the way, the guardian means he's the guardian was the one who was govern his behavior. Hmm. The steward was he was in charge of the property. So he had no freedom really because he couldn't, although his name might be, you know, on the, on the property or in the trust. Yeah. yeah. A steward would would be, be over be, that be running it. and the guardian would watch over him so yeah. he would he wouldn't he would be like a slave his yeah. his life would be controlled from the outside um, until and again he's saying the law is only in place until a certain time the implication is paul is saying mm. we are not under the law anymore we we've, right. we've once christ came yeah new reality came in and we're mm. not under the law. Yeah. It was until the time appointed by the Father, and this is of course... Which is the coming the of into. the seed. The seed. Exactly. But verse, verse 3 is saying, yes, so also when we were children, we were uh, under the basic principles of the world. We were in slavery. Yeah, so now that's a tricky one. The, yeah. um, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Yeah. And I think that uh, we were talking about that. But, yeah. Um, I think it, this word elements could mean elementary principles, and I think mm. that's what it means, the elementary principles. And he's talking about the ceremonial law. Mm. It's not that obvious, but um, mm. later on in verse um, 9, he's saying to them, after you've known God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements? It's the That's same right. word, uh, right? Yeah. Elementary principles, yeah. and he describes them as weak and beggarly. Mm. In other words, they can't deliver. They, yeah. they, ha they might have a value, but they are weak, and the law is weak to save you, yeah. and it's beggarly, it means it's got no no riches. There's no, and it's not got no saving power. No saving power, exactly. Yeah. So these are the externals of religion. These are the external ceremonial law. They, then it's not that they don't have a place, but they are elementary. Yeah, they are not the reality. Exactly. And then he goes on and says, he describes them in verse yeah. 10, he says, you observe days and months, seasons and years. Mm. In other words, it's these externals, mm. you know, that have their purpose, but they're not powerful. They don't save you. Um, they, they might point to the reality, but they're not yeah. the reality, and they're called They're elementary. not redemptive, because yeah. he uses the word, you know, because uh, I'm skipping a little bit, yeah. verse 5, he, he, then he talks about um, uh, receiving the full rights of sons because you're redeemed. Yes. So you're not, you're not a, a true son until you're redeemed. Mm. You're just, as it were, in the, in the framework yes. um, of these basic principles. And elements. So yes, it's the the elements of the world. It's it's kind of the element. If a, a Jewish boy, for example, would grow up within with all these rules and traditions, and he would learn to keep them, and it was the co it's the cosmos, the world order that he lived up under, the traditions, and which he learnt, and that structured his life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And 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 he was in bondage, yeah. and it's like children on on bondage. To that, mm. in the Gentile world, we'd have our own version of that, that would be more corrupted. But we, we ourselves would be brought up under certain traditions, and, mm. and in those days, particularly, you know, religious stuff, rit rituals, yeah. gods, and. But it's interesting. You have the sort of the wearing of the toga, in the Greek world, but but in the Jewish world, you have the bar mitzvah. So you you reach that mm. stage, quite young, twelve years yeah. old, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, it's preparation for life ahead. I was thinking, you know, it's it, these element, this idea of elementary principles. It's like when you learn anything, you have to learn. Now the we're getting into maths. Yeah, maths. You know, we're getting into or pr pr um, New Newton's Principia or, or whatever it's. You're called. learning how to dance, or yeah. you're learning. You know, first of all, you have to go through the externals. You, mm. you almost have to imitate, or you're learning how to play the piano. You have to do the scales, you know, it's the element. Yeah. Or, or literature, you have to learn the elements, which is the ABCs. That's right. And, and in themselves, all you do is you kind of, it Ro means wrote. nothing to you to almost. start with. You, you're, yeah. it, it, 
it, they're externals that, that you yeah. have to grasp. They're not very meaningful to Like you. in the early nursery class, A, B, C, <laughs> you know, the kids are you know, going through just yeah. that, that really, it's not actually meaning yeah. anything. No, exactly. It's when the letters come together, or one, two, three, you know, yeah. two times two is two, you know, it, it's just a, a, a rote learning the basic principles. Exactly. And then, the you know, if you're Derek, you get into the formulae and then, <laughs> and then the algorithms and all well, the rest of it. At some point you internalize it, don't you? Yeah. They suddenly, yeah. you know how to put yeah. those letters together and, and it's meaningful. Mm. And, and, and that's, that's maturity. Mm. And when you reach a certain stage, you don't have to keep doing the scales all the time. Yeah. Or, oh, I better review my ABCs again. How does it all you, fit you know, together? <laughs> how, does, how does the truth of God's word all, as it were, crystallize and then, then it means something? After a bit, you, you start doing it from the heart. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't need the, ele you have the elements in your heart, but you don't need that mm. external thing mm. on you. And when you. When you know the Lord, John, it, it's different reading God's word. Yes, the light, go, a, the light a, goes on. It goes on. It when you're born it, again, suddenly, suddenly it all it, makes it's sense. It's zapping at you from yes. all cor corners of That's the scriptures. Right. And you begin to see the connections yeah. in the other parts of the Bible and pull them together. Yeah. I mean, I, I see lots of stuff out there you know, tell me that the Bible's been corrupted, that it was rewritten by, you know, Pope who yeah. in 12... Yeah. I mean, it's all rubbish because certainly before the age of computers and even with the age of computers, there's no way, however clever the authors were, yeah. that they could have created this thing which yeah. with the continuity and the interconnections that go on, it would have been impossible. They would have fallen down somewhere and we'd have found it because yeah. the Lord would have pointed out. As you've said many times, actually this is relevant because it, it's, yeah. it's out there at the moment. You know, people are talking about books that have been discovered in the cellars of the Vatican which have never seen the light of yeah. day and all that. Well, perhaps and perhaps not. The point is the Lord has preserved his word yes, as you keep it. saying and he, whatever was whatever the iniquity of man was doing yeah. to try and pervert it, he has ensured the gospel has endured and is revealed. Yeah. And I think that's all that matters. Yeah. Whatever may come exactly. to light doesn't really matter. Mm. We have all we need. And, and the spiritual yeah. dimension. So the thing about it is that, yes, we have it all in text form, yeah. but until you are spiritually yeah, enlightened, it, it's, it's basically a bit of Shakespeare here, you know, a bit a, of Tyndale it is, there. It is a and it's, it's just words. It just but when you become spiritually alive... You, you, you know the meaning of it. When you're yeah. born again, when you become a son... Yes. Yeah, you come into the reality. Yeah. And these elements are, he's saying, that's what the ceremonial law is like. Yeah. They, as, as a Jew particularly, they were under bondage to having to do all these ceremonies. But these, ele these were teaching them the ABCs. Yeah. Blood sacrifice, uncleanness and yeah. cleanness. Yeah. Uh, how blood is necessary to cleanse you. And temples and mm. the worship of God. You know, these are the elements and they're taught by these shadow ceremonies mm. But don't see those shadow things as the ultimate, like, oh, well, I know my ABCs. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, that is just to prepare you to become Shakespeare or, or to become a great musician or, you know, a great mathematician or anything like that. They are, so don't get stuck on the elements, on the ceremonies. Discover the, the reality, the substance, which yeah. is Christ. And when you're connected to Christ, suddenly you discover blood sacrifice, what it really means. Yeah temple, what does that really mean? Yeah. All of these things become real and you don't need a physical temple to go to to, to appreciate it. Amen. So we're, in, we're getting right to the end. I, I was thinking of the chorus, how did it start? The one that I started off before and it's Abba Father let me be yours and yours alone mm. may my life forever be evermore your own never let my heart grow cold Never let me go. Have a father, let me be yours and yours alone. Now, within that, there are the basic principles and the elements, but also there's the wonderful glory of sonship, knowing what that truth, what the truth of those words. See you next week. <laughs>